So this is James's favorite way to play. Give me this, give me this mouse. Give me this mouse. Woohoo! Hey everyone. Hey, hey, hey everyone. This is James and James is my foster kitten who was born with a congenital limb defect. He was basically born with no back legs, or more accurately, he was born with hind limbs that didn't fully develop in the womb. So his front limbs developed totally normally, but his hind limbs developed just as these two little nubs. Um, the little nubs do have bones in them, uh, but he's not really able to move those nubs. They just kind of dangle there, but they're not hurting him. They're not causing him any problems. When people find out that I'm fostering a kitten who only has two legs, a lot of people feel really sorry for him or say, oh, that's really sad. But I'll tell you this much, you really shouldn't feel sorry for kittens like this. They don't really need our pity. They just need our support. I've worked with a lot of kittens who have mobility challenges. Kittens who are paralyzed, kittens who have swimmer syndrome, and even kittens who have had to have an amputation. And what I've learned from years of working with kittens who have mobility challenges is they don't know they're any different. They don't feel sorry for themselves and they don't really want us to feel sorry for them either. They just want us to love them and support them and help them adapt to their environment. So instead of seeing them for what isn't there, I say, see what is there, or see what can be there. So in this video, I'm gonna tell you all about James, and I'm gonna give you a couple pieces of advice for working with kittens who have mobility challenges. So my first piece of advice is don't coddle the cat. Something I see a lot with people who rescue a kitten that has physical differences is they feel so bad for the cat that they end up coddling them and pitying them and not encouraging them to be independent. So if you feel bad for James and you you know, carry him around all day in a sling or you don't allow him to explore his space, you maybe keep him pent up in a tiny little playpen or you know, you just kind of pick him up and take him from place to place, that's not gonna let James learn how to be his most independent version of himself. We wanna take these kittens who have these physical differences and yes, we wanna make sure that we're working with them in a way that's safe and respectful of their condition, but we do want them to learn how to be independent in the real world because we want them to be successful in the real world. You know, it is possible to love these babies to death. If you love them too much and you coddle them too much, you can actually end up really harming them. The only way to gain mobility is to exercise. So I have to encourage him to move. And yeah, you feel a little bit bad when he's looking up and meowing at you and going, you could just carry me. But guess what? Getting them to move is what helps them become independent. In James's case, when he got here, he had so many different issues from not moving. His chest was really, really flat, probably from being prone and laying in one place. And he was so obstipated, so severely constipated, he was just not moving around and using his body very much. So it's not like not having back legs is what could kill him, but not encouraging to move his body absolutely could. So don't coddle the cat. My next piece of advice is obviously to encourage daily activity. My approach to working with kittens like James is to encourage them to navigate the world around them in their natural body because that's all they have. So you want to make them actually work for things. I could put James's litter box and his bed and his food all right next to each other, but instead I put them in slightly different areas so that if he wants to eat, he's going to have to get himself up and go over to the food. James, it's time for lunch. I'm not feeding you in bed. You gotta come out of here. Come on, there we go. And let me tell you, this little guy is very food motivated. So he has learned the sound of that can. And as soon as that can of food opens, he will get himself over to where he needs to go. And that's good exercise for him. When it comes to playtime, he would love if I just brought every single toy right to him, right? 
You know, and it's true, he likes to spin in circles and just work within the area that's easy for him to navigate. But instead, what I'll do is actually encourage him to exercise by dragging a wand toy along the floor. For him, he had such limited musculature in his front limbs that it actually was a little bit hard for him to move himself around. So what I did was I would lift his booty in the beginning and give him a little bit of a boost. That would help him move right along. And I even made this like really silly hat for him where the hat had like a wand toy attached to it. So while I moved, the wand toy moved and I could come behind with him and kind of hold his rear end while he chased it. But that gave him the chance to actually, you know, use those front limbs, get some practice exercising. And then eventually he became able to do that without the help. And that kind of goes to my third tip, which is that you want to adapt your environment to the needs of the cat. It's not that your cat is bad at getting around in the environment, it's that your environment is not suited to the needs of the cat. So you wanna think about that. I mean, in a case of a kitten who has no back limbs or paralyzed back limbs, uh, these are situations where the cat is really dependent on their front limbs and on their claws to get them around. So maybe you don't want them to be on tile or on wood or something like that. A uh, surface like carpet can be a lot better because they can actually pull themselves forward. So maybe get some carpet runners throughout your house or you can use yoga mats. I use yoga mats or athletic mats when I have a mobility challenged cat uh, because it does give them that grippy texture where they're able to really pull themselves around and start working those muscles. There's other things that you can do to adapt your space. Obviously, James really likes being in the bed, um, but he can't hop up here, so I have two different things for him. I have a set of steps, and I also have a ramp, and he can practice doing both of them. It was a lot of practice for him at first. I help him practice going up. Okay, let's see if you can do the stairs. You ready? Whoa, strong man! Strong man! What about this one? Look. Can you do that one? Come on. Get it. Get it. Get it. Come on. Get it. There we go. There we go. There we go. Yes, yes, yes. And down. What are we going to do? You want to come down? Let's come down. Oh, good one. That was good. Come on. You got it. You got it. Yes! Good job! That was really smart. Good job. <laughs> and up. Okay, James, let's go. Come on. Let's go. Where are we going? And down. Come on. And eventually he's gone to a place where he can just do it. Let's go, let's go, everybody go down the stairs, down the stairs, come on. Let's go, let's go, everybody's going down the stairs. Good job, James. One more. And what's really cool now is that he loves being in the bed so much that at night, right before I fall asleep, we put him down on the ground. And in the morning when I wake up, he's actually in the bed because he's brought himself up the ramp or up the steps and he can do that on his own while I'm sleeping. And that's a really beautiful thing that he wouldn't have been able to do if I hadn't encouraged him over and over again. Now in the mornings we snuggle together and he purrs and purrs and asks me to throw his toys for him. And it's really cool that he has the independence to be able to choose that he'd like to be in the bed or he'd like to get out of the bed and go over to the litter box or to his favorite toy or to his food. So take a look around and think about how you can adapt everything to meet the needs of the cat. The last thing I wanna say is if you're working with a kitten who has congenital differences, please make sure that you are really paying attention to everything else about them. Because a lot of kittens who have a congenital issue end up having other issues as well. You really just wanna make sure you're monitoring them, monitor their weight, Make sure that you see that they're pooping and that it all looks good. Get a thorough examination from a vet so that you're able to 
deal with anything else that comes up before it becomes a big deal. Fortunately now, James is doing really well, but if you saw my other video or if you followed him online, you know that that was not the case before. When James came here, he could barely breathe. He was severely obstipated. He had stool coiling all through his colon that he wasn't able to push out. And his belly was so distended that it was pressing on his diaphragm, limiting his lung capacity. He didn't have any muscle to get himself around. He could really barely move. And it was very scary. He spent days in the hospital and we genuinely thought that he was not going to make it. So the fact that now he's doing so beautifully and he's running up and down the stairs and he's you know, playing with his toys and cuddling and he's so happy and affectionate. I wanna say it's miraculous, but really the truth is that it's just hard work that's put in. Sometimes addressing those underlying issues has to take priority over dealing with mobility issues. And you know, he had to have several um, deobstipation procedures and be on a bunch of laxatives. And I was able to do a final enema for him at home. And oh my gosh, he was able to go to the bathroom on his own. And I was able to get that big plug of stool out of him. And it was like the best feeling in the world. And ever since then, he's been doing a lot better. Once he was not backed up, he was able to keep everything moving smoothly. I was able to get him in a good litter box routine. And then I was able to move on to all of these other issues. So please make sure you're addressing all of the underlying issues first. Deal with those, then you can focus on making sure that you're encouraging that active participation in exercise. Make sure that you are adapting their environment. And remember, don't coddle the kitten. Don't pity these little guys. Just spring into action and do the right thing for them. Little kittens like James are euthanized all the time because we feel sad for them and because we pity them. And that does them no good at all. So please don't just see what's not there. See what is there. See the potential. He is filled with potential and he is going to have a great life because he has a foster mom who saw the potential in him. So if you're working with mobility challenged kittens, don't feel discouraged. Just look at them and all of the potential they have to live an awesome life and then take those steps to make it happen.